Welcome to the Be Your Soul podcast. I'm your host, Sky Bradshaw. This podcast is presented in three segments to support the energy of your authentic self. Each segment builds into the next, creating what we hope is a valuable tool for your own self-growth. So be sure to listen to each segment all the way through to the last one, which has helpful tools and tips on how to do the work. Today's topic is art and intuition, and our guest is artist Shan Ferreira. Before we dive into the Unclouded Heart segment of the show, let's invite ourselves to become present in this moment within our body, mind, and energy. Taking a few deep breaths, allowing and inviting ourselves to relax, 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 relax. And as we move into this space of complete relaxation, we open up our energies to the ancestors, loved ones, and friends to come together today to heal and guide us and lift us to the highest version of ourselves in the light of the universe. So we may hear what we need to hear, know what we need to know, connect how we need to connect, and be what we need to be for our highest and best good and the highest and best good of all involved. So we open up space to receive. Creativity and intuition. I believe that if you are using creativity, you're using your intuition. And if you're using your intuition, you're using creativity. They bond together as both use the intellectual processes of thinking and reasoning and the intuitive processes of knowing and curiosity. Where there is one, there is usually the other. Another thing that I've learned and observed in the many energy healings and energy classes that I've taught is that the same pathways of energy are used during creativity as they are when the intuition is activated. So being more creative is like doing exercises for your intuition. As an artist, I wait for that sweet spot where spiritual connection and intuition couple to inspire me before starting a new piece. I watch my intuition flow and form the piece of art in my mind before I make a move to draw on the cloth. Then in front of me, as if I'm an observer, yet an intricate part of the process, it will begin with just one line as the drawing comes to life. Sometimes that means I touch my art for only a moment as the inspiration strikes. And other times that means I sit down and suddenly it's hours later and my intuition has brought forward such a beautiful piece in front of me. I also think that allowing the intuition to flow into art takes a level of bravery and self-trust. If we stay too tuned in with the intellectual self, then we will reason through our art, trying to create a formula. If we trust the intuition and where it leads us, then the path becomes clear. This process may be where the saying, art mimics life, came from. As a sequin textile artist, I sew sequin after sequin after sequin, one by one, individually onto cloth until a beautiful image is formed. But that also means there isn't much room for an eraser. I know that in the 10 years or more that I've been sequining, every time I've had to rip out the stitches and start over was because I let my mind override my intuition. As I looked at what I had created, it wasn't that it wasn't beautiful. It's that it wasn't what was intended for that piece. And my intuition would nudge and urge and call until I got out that seam ripper and ripped out those sequins. Hours of work unstitched in a few moments. Not once have I looked back at those redos and doubted that they were exactly what was needed to be done because my intuition knew more than my mind. So whether your art is cooking, doodling, telling a story, or sewing 10,000 sequins to create a portrait, just allow the intuition to lead, grow, and support your self-trust. Production of the Be Your Soul podcast is made possible in part by Tarot by Sky, because it's your future. Tarot by Sky offers intuitive tarot and energy healing sessions, as well as life coaching, classes, spiritual guidance, and more. 
offering sessions via Zoom, email, phone, or in the office in Greensboro, North Carolina, Sky is ready to help you turn change into growth. Book your session today on the web at tarotbysky.com and find her on Facebook and Instagram at tarotbysky. Coming up next, an interview with artist Shan Ferreira on art and intuition. Welcome to the Skylight segment of today's show. Today, we welcome an amazing guest, Shan Ferreira, who is a well-known face and body painter. She has carved a niche for herself painting UV glow paint in the electronic dance music scene. Live painting performers and the crowd at events is her passion. She is also a professor in the art design field and has taught design for 22 years. And she happens to be a very near and dear friend to my heart, who I love so much. So welcome, Shan. Hello. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm so grateful for you to be on. So when I was thinking about the topics I want to talk about and who might be perfect for that topic to come on and like share their nuggets of wisdom and who would (laughs) really bring forward. Um, When I was thinking of art and intuition and how they come together and like what that's like, you know, I hear myself talking to people about it, you know, on the regular about the idea, if you want to hone your intuition and you want to know your intuition and get creative, do some art. And you were one of the first people that I thought of for this topic because. Well, that makes my day. (laughs) Not only do you like embrace art with your whole self, like with your heart, but you could just see how it comes forward intuitively in such a beautiful way. So thank you. Thank you. So, you know, the way the show goes, I ask a few questions and then um, I have some questions I ask every guest. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about with you was how you believe that art and intuition are connected. Like, you know, what does that look like to you and and what's your experience with that? I think it changes the time for me. And I think very much now the last few years, I fully understand it. But I think it's always been like my gut to be an artist and all of my emotions were attached to art my whole life, but way more in the recent years. But now because I body paint, I go with my gut. So I always trust that a thousand percent in the last few years. I actually had a emergency surgery and almost died a few years ago. And ever since I just take every day and I savor my gifts and painting and making people feel good in lots of different ways are my gifts. So I always try to channel those. And also when you're body painting, you're interacting with the energy of others. So in my live painting, it's affected so much because I don't like say, oh, do you want a butterfly or "Oh, do you want a flower? I say, do you want me to paint what I feel? Or you can give me three words to guide me. And I do a lot of very optical illusion, more abstract stuff, but they always say it it's, it's so them and they're all unique and they're all, and I just go with it. I trust my gut now where I don't think I always was confident enough to do that before. I love that. That's beautiful. (laughs) Every picture I see, every time I experience your art live, it's just amazing. And I'm always so impressed. So how do you think intuition comes to play in your everyday life then? I mean, we just talked about how it happens in your art. I think, like I said, uh, I think I've always had a strong gut feeling and I don't think I really knew to trust it until I got older. And the more I do and I live in alignment, as in I live my truth and everything, I'm very much in sync. And some people never get to that place in life, but I very much am in there. And since I've been there, that's called like my baseline now. And so everything I feel above that, if that makes sense, I trust it a thousand percent. So whatever, I don't even question what I paint half the time. I don't sketch what I'm painting. I just go with what I feel. And it always, I just trust that that's why I'm here to share that. And it always is exactly how it's supposed to be. And I, I've never been that confident as an artist. Like I always thought I was a good artist and things like that. But the last few years specifically, I just, I let it flow. And it's just my outlet of my gifts. And I just trust that that's what it's supposed to look like. And it never fails me 
And I love that I've gotten to that place. I wish I was that confident about everything else in life. But no, <laughs> like my art, I like I always say I'll be single forever until someone makes me feel as good as my paintbrush because I never <laughs> am more confident and sure of anything as when I'm holding my airbrush or my paintbrush. So I joke about it all the time that my paintbrush is my boyfriend, but it's just because that's my longest relationship and it's what I trust the most that what comes out of it is magic. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. It that might be is, sad, but it's so true. <laughs> no, I think that that's beautiful. Like to put that passion and trust and connection into your artwork is one of the most beautiful things. That is amazing. <laughs> How do you think that people can foster not only their artistic self, but their intuitive self? Like what what advice would you give to someone who, you know, that, and obviously um, you learned in a difficult <laughs> journey, you know, like in the beginning, but like, if you could give some tips or advice to somebody to get there, what would that look like? To me, I think everyone thinks too much. Oh, I can't paint. I can't draw a straight line. I can't draw a stick figure. You name it. I teach them. So I know just do, don't think just do and whatever comes out it's part, you know, even if it's an emotional outlet, like let it just go. If you're angry, paint it out. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's, it's releasing that from you. If you're happy, make beautiful colors and whatever comes to you, just go. It doesn't matter what the result is. It's the process. And um, I think everyone just wants it to look good or look right or whatever. And there's no right or wrong. It's art. It's all objective. So I think just getting over that, what it's supposed to be really helps people get in sync with art and appreciating art in a different way where a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't know how to do anything. Who cares? Like, you know, a lot of people try to sing karaoke and I promise they don't know how to do that either, but it's fun. Like, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the process. It's the experience. Like that's, I call it part of your adventure. So whatever it is, if you take a wrong turn, Oh, look, well, look at this tree. I've never seen this tree before. So just part of your adventure. Same with art, put brush, try something new, get crayons, be silly, go back to that playful mindset. And I think that helps you just get out of your normal day-to-day -day life routine that people get so caught up in and they need a vacation from. I saw something today that said, um, I want to build a life that I don't need a vacation from. And I realized I've built that life and it doesn't mean, but it also means I'm a workaholic. So I'm not going to say <laughs> it's perfect, but you know, <laughs> I work all the time and I love it. So I have to check myself sometimes there too. I probably went off on a tangent on that, but no, I just don't think just the price, it's all about the process. It's not right or wrong. Just try something new. And that's part of being creative. Like I always say the serial killer of creativity is the monotony of everyday life. Wow. Like, so there's, it nice. is because we go in the sink of you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to take out the trash on Monday and go to work at eight and get off at five. And why it doesn't have to be like that take 20 minutes at lunch and you're worth 20 minutes of your day start doodling zentangling like whatever you want to try just singing it doesn't have to be vine art it could be just try something you've never tried for 20 minutes a day and it'll change your life and I have put that into practice when I was very unhappy a few years ago and just like I started meditating and manifesting and I I said this is so stupid when I started doing it and 20 minutes a day, I said, but in a month, I spend 20 minutes bitching about things every day or complaining about what's wrong. I'm going to spend 20 minutes working on me, whether it was walking, whether it was arting, whether it was manifesting or meditating. It was 20 minutes for me that I could block out everything else. And it was 20 minutes I wasn't being negative. So it flipped my whole mindset. And after a month, it did totally change my life. And yeah. so it doesn't mean I do all the things every day. But as a majority, every day I spend 20 minutes on me or my art or whatever it is that is for me, not for anyone else. I love that. So <laughs> I remember when um, when we were in lockdown, you were doing, what were they called? They were the artifacts. The artifacts. They called artifacts. Yes, yes, yeah, sorry. the artifacts. And yes. you, you sent me an artifact that yes. matched exactly the <laughs> piece that I was making. And yeah, so they were pretty. so uncannily the same yes. figure. It yes. was beautiful and mind blowing at the same time. And so yes. I feel like that that is one of those, like you're in alignment, like no question or doubt that that was like 
we both synced up in perfect alignment with our art and didn't it's have so any funny. clue that the other one was doing what we were doing. It was so beautiful. That was so fun. So you want me to tell you sure. talk about that? Okay. So I preface that 10, 15 years ago, I was healing and I started doing artifacts and they were 20 minute drawings a day, just trying new mediums, limited uh, palette. They were just healing. So, I mean, I think I made over 400 pieces that year. So it was just small little art things, but it was helping me through whatever I was dealing with emotionally. Then COVID came. I just had surgery a few weeks before COVID started. So I was stuck at home. I was not being able to body paint or face paint. I wasn't around people, which is my happy place. And so I was like, what can I do to help this situation? What can make me an essential worker? (laughs) (laughs) And I saw my friends struggling and I saw, no, so many people live alone, weren't around isolation and artists tend to have their own issues with whatever it is about a lot of mental health or just things like that. It's a depression and stuff like that. So I was like, what can I give back? So I posted a post on Facebook and said, if anyone would like to receive some art, please message me. And I got a list and I think I ended up getting to probably 80 in the eighties. I know I at least did that many, maybe more, but so all the people I wrote down and I kept track. And so when most of the people I knew, so I had some type of relationship with them, whether it was like, what I think of when I think of them. So each one was unique. So, and I also found a quote that made me think of them or about the art that I thought would help them. So each each piece uh, was that person. So maybe it was like when I met them, they had a cat suit on and they reminded me of Catwoman or whatever it was. Like, it's so silly. What yours was what I thought of. And I think there's a quote on the back of all of them. So I just, and I mailed them in bright colored envelopes because if you're stuck at home, I made them fun. And so it started being fun to me. Like, oh, let me, who am I going to send today? How many can I do today? And so it was really, it was really selfish. It totally was selfish. I was doing it for me, but it ended up bringing joy to all the people I mailed it to. So much joy. Yeah, it was awesome. And I like, I have documentations of a lot of them over that year, but it was, it was just very fulfilling to me to give back. Um, And also like, Later that year, I ended up having another surgery, which I'm good now. But in the hospital, they, were, they had cards and stuff. So I took my painting stuff and painted the cards for to, for the cancer center that was attached like for to, to give to them to because I was stuck in there going crazy. So again, it was selfish healing, sharing my gifts. <laughs> so <laughs> I think when you give, you receive and when you receive, you give. Yeah. That was such a beautiful, yeah. like reciprocal, you know, possession and. And I, I, and I also had like people I met all through online, weird interactions, and they would do these Zoom calls. And I happened to log in one thinking it was one thing. It was like a channel. I think it was on Twitch. And one was doing characters just of her <laughs> friend. And like, took you, she'd let you take a screenshot of it so you could have a copy. And me and her became uh, online friends. I ended up buying art from her later. And so I just thought that was such a neat. And then someone would do yoga on that same channel 20 minutes later. And they just, someone was organizing all of these things. Like I just was fascinated. Like it made me appreciate all my friends' talents. And then my friends were DJing and we'd send them tips. So, cause they, that's what kept me sane during COVID is the music that I could hear play since I couldn't go to festivals and events and things like that. The whole cycle of it was just so beautiful to be a part of and to watch. And when I got mine and I saw it was literally the ex- exact same image I was seeing. That was kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we get, we get a connection. A connection. It gave me chills. <laughs> it gave me chills too. It gives me chills. There. Like sometimes I get like a little teary when I just think about how cool it was. <laughs> too funny. So is there anything else you want to say about art and intuition before we move to our regular guest questions? I think a general statement, always trust your gut. In whatever aspect, in artistic, creative, life choices, never question it. It's there for a reason. And don't second guess yourself and think that you're being silly. Just go with whatever it is. If it's being safe, if it's being artistic, if it's being anything, trust your gut. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So every episode, we have these three questions. The first one is, what do you think it means to be your soul? I think it's living in alignment. I think it's the balance of your life. So if that makes sense. So that's, I I thought about this one a lot 
And I think it's about getting to a place where you're in balance enough that you can be, you can share your gifts or you can be artistic or you can spend time for you or whatever your passion is. It could be exercise. It could be music. It could be gardening, whatever it is, the things that bring you joy. Why put them off to the side? Like it's so sad. I even give my students like a quiz, a balance quiz. And it says, which is out of sync. Like they have a one to 10 of all these questions and then they can see what's out of sync because they, I need them to be creative. Mm -hmm. And if you're worried about bills or where you're going to live next week, or you have a, um, you're in a scary situation at home or whatever it may be, you can't be creative because your brain power and all your energy is going to be focused on that problem. Mm -hmm. So then you're wasting why you're here. So if you, you need to check yourself every once in a while to make sure you're in balance, make sure all the things and what can you do? Not like what's out of control, but you know, what you can control right? to make that better so that you are able to be more creative or you are able to, to live your truth. Nice. <laughs> so what is one thing you do? And we talked a little about this, but what is one thing that you do no matter what to be sure you get your self-care every day? I think you already answered it, but we can. No, you're going to laugh. <laughs> so I, I do check myself. I do check myself. I make sure I sleep. Uh, I don't sleep much that I have sleeping problems. So like sleep is essential. And I love my cat. That was my joy. Like I lay with my cat and I know that sounds silly and I am an yeah. old cat lady, but <laughs> Sanchez is my cat and he is my happy place. So I, he always knows if I sit, oh, it's time. It's lovey-dovey time. So that re-energizes me and re-energizes him. <laughs> so if I'm home, that's where I'm at. A blankie and a cat. <laughs> I am not home or Sanchez would be on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> I think a blankie and a cat is the best self. Yeah, <laughs> right. Really. It's like a weighted blanket. It's it is. It's cat. So good. <laughs> so what does being centered and balanced feel like to you? It's just, I think that's living in alignment. I know I probably am just repeating myself, but um, making sure all that you're doing is al in align with your values and everything that's important to you, you're making time for. And if you're not happy about something, what are you doing to improve it? Yeah. Because we could just be miserable and it could be a downward spiral and it's real easy to get caught up into that. I, I do it as well. So I say stop. If it's been going on more than like a day and it's okay to be angry, it's okay to have a bad day, but anything that's not going right, what can I do to fix it? What's, mm -hmm. what's in my control? If it's a job, what can I do? If I'm unhappy, what can I do to improve that? Um, so I think just like checking yourself is the most essential thing, um, to look to like living in balance and, and we all get caught up in it. Yeah. I can, I can talk, I, I can talk a big game. I have my moments, trust me, <laughs> but I, but they don't last long because I refuse to give it that energy because any of the energy you're giving to something negative or a problem why like yeah. what could you know eliminate it's taken, that. You it's can taken, give your energy it's taken from the solution if you're giving it right. to the problem it's taken from the solution That's right and I even talk about to my friends they'll upset about a relationship or something like that and I'm like if he did this, don't give any more energy to that. You mm -hmm. spend enough on it. Like it, it's, it could be a person or a problem or whatever it is. And I, I have to check myself with that too. So yeah. it's just nice to, <laughs> yeah. it's nice to be able to check yourself. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've been at a place in my life for a very long time. It took me years to figure it out. And I like that I'm able to do that. Some people never get to that place. And, and self-awareness, you know, like, it doesn't mean that we're going to get it right every time. It means right. that we are self-aware enough that when we are off or it isn't feeling good, that we mm -hmm. can bring that awareness to it and then know that we have the power for solution. And I think that, you know, that in itself is a, a great gift and also, you know, a hard place to get to, you know, you kind of go, got to go through the muck of not getting, not being self-aware for a little while before you end up getting there. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love that you said it like that. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the other thing when we go into getting, when we get kind of caught in those problems, you know, I always like to remind people that, 
you know, if we're fighting against something, then our, our energy is out into that thing. But if we're yes. fighting for or working for something, our energy is in our center and that it comes from us and we're more right. productive. We're magnetizing it to us versus out there in that like hungry hook energy, trying to control, you know, outside of ourselves. So that's, that centering can look like, you know, just calling it to you, magnetizing it to you, magnetizing the solution versus wrestling with the problem. I've also found very easily that like helping other people, not getting sucked into their problems, but checking them Mm -hmm. because you're their friend and I'm that friend. So when you repeated the same thing you did last time when you got hurt, you know, so like even giving back my knowledge and my self-awareness to Mm -hmm. them helps them check themselves. And I feel like it it can really spread in a good way instead of spreading negative things. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, when people are like energy drainers, <laughs> that is exhausting. So I call it my happy bubble. Even I put my arms out around my, around my body and I'm like, no, 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 no more negativity. Give me three positives <laughs> to balance out those three negatives you said when you got in the car, you know? So yes. my kids do not enjoy that, but I, it's true. Cause I, it'll ruin my whole day or or ruin my evening. And I'm like, whoa, 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 nope. And then if you make them give you three positives, the day at school wasn't so bad, whatever. And then it, even if they're being snarky, it changes their mindset. Right. Like, what are three good things that happened today? Oh, well, I guess my hair was good or whatever. You know, it might be snarky, but it it ends that cycle for a little bit and changes the perspective. So it helps other people check themselves too when you're aware. And it, and it gives that perspective of balance, but in a, in that, like I said, solution-based way, because, you know, when we start looking down the dark tunnel, it really seems like all that exists is the dark tunnel. When you say, give me three positives, then you're like, hold on, that tunnel exists in a giant world of brightness. Like where, how can I tune in with that? And so it, yeah. it definitely... Yeah. One of my favorite things to say, if if a person is kind of like a repetitive negative or like working on the same problem, I always like to say, oh, that sounds really hard. What are you going to do about that? Yeah. (laughs) And then, and then they're like, 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 oh, "Oh, wait, wait. (laughs) I can do something. What is the thing I want to do? And I love that my friends are so close to me. Like if I start down that, they'll go, I'm holding you accountable. What are you going to do about it? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Uh, What's about my happy bubble? (laughs) So I love that I have that, those people to check me too. (laughs) Yeah. So do you have any upcoming events or anything that you want the listeners to kind of cue into? Where can they find you? What's put out there some where they can see some of your murals maybe? Oh, yeah. So um, I have only done like school murals this summer. Um, But if you follow me on social media, I always post where I'm going to be next, where I'm going to be body painting, mostly our shows, but I have some things in the works. I'm hoping in the fall to do another body paint expo. Um, I used to do one a few years ago before COVID. So I'm working on a new quarterly showcase. So I will be posting on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I am Shandyland. S-H-A-N-N-D-Y underscore land on Instagram and just Shandy land on Facebook. So please follow me. Um, and I always post and I help my other small business locals show their events. So you always know what's fun to do around, <laughs> around the triad. <laughs> um, even if I'm not there, I promise I'll help you have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate it. This was so much fun. Good. Thank you so much. I'm glad I was nervous for nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I told you it's just going to be like sitting, having a conversation with me. That's what everybody (laughs) wants to do. We all just want to listen to other people chat about things we love. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Or talk about things we love. (laughs) Talk about things we love. Connect to things we love. Yeah. Speaking of things we love, I love you so much. Thank you. I love you too. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Production of the Be Your Soul podcast is made possible in part by Lil Bird Angel Bracelets. Lil Bird Angel Bracelets offer a variety of stones and gems to enhance your energy and support your vibe. 
This young entrepreneur does all the creative planning, bead choosing, and placement. She also helps package and ship. If you're looking for that perfect bling for your wrist, these bracelets offer the energetic and artistic energy you need. A portion of all sales go to Lil Bird's chosen charity. Learn more at lilbirdbracelets.com. That's L-I-L-B-I-R-D-B-R-A-C-E-L-E-T-S.com or on Instagram, Angel Bracelets Little Bird. This week in That's What Sky Says, a new practice for sensing and understanding your own energy and intuition. In this segment, offer tools and guidance that I have found helpful in my practice, and maybe you will too. Today, I'm going to offer up a way to tune in and feel your way through receiving intuitive communication. Be prepared to log this experience in your journal. Then at the end of the day, compare it to any major events that happen throughout your day. Upon waking each day, lie quietly for the first five minutes of the day and listen to your three intuitions, as well as the energy flowing through your body. To remind you, we have three intuitions. The carnal intuition, which works with the first three chakras, red roots, orange sacral, and yellow solar plexus. It gathers its information from the physical body, and that intuition is considered fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Next is the true self intuition, which works with the yellow solar plexus, the green heart, and the blue throat chakras. It gains its information from the emotional body, and its intuition is knowing. Some people call that women's intuition, but everyone has access to it. Then there's the high self intuition which works with the blue throat, indigo third eye, violet crown, and translucent seat of the soul chakras. It gets its information from the energy body and the intuition is prophecy. This can be anything from deja vu to dreams to having visions of the future. One of the key parts of trusting, hearing, and receiving the intuition is knowing which intuition is communicating. We often funnel everything through our carnal when technically all it should be receiving intuitions about would be safety, security, and stability information. Say, for example, someone says something that hurts your feelings and you think, I knew they were going to do that. Then that should have been received and assimilated through the true self and the sense of knowing. Just as oftentimes when we have a dream, we interpret it as a warning through the carnal intuition instead of being open to the prophecy that it may be bringing forward and whatever that message there would be. But our carnal intuition is an important intuition. It tells us, don't go down that dark alley, change your routes on that journey, or did you lock that door? The following journal exercises will allow you to get a better sense of how to listen when it comes to the intuitions through a series of questions. As you are learning the lingo of each intuition, you want to make sure you go through this series every day for guess how many days? 21. I bet you've heard that before. 21 days creates a habit. And if you can train your intuition to speak and yourself to listen, then by the end of the 21 days, you should have a better understanding of each of the intuitions and how they communicate. So either get a journal just for this work or add a page to your existing journal as we move through these questions to better listen and understand our intuitions. Each morning upon waking, lay quietly and tune in to these questions. Can you feel your energy in your body? Where is it primarily located? Does it feel linked to one of the three intuitions? It may not feel connected every time you check, but just tuning into the energy is still making a stride forward. If yes, tune into the intuitive ping for the following questions. If no, tune into the energy for the following questions. If you had to give it a color, what would that be? Does this feel like it is of your energy or coming from beyond you or past you, like an ancestor, higher being, or even your next door neighbor? Does it feel familiar? Have you had this feeling before? If so, can you put it in a few simple words and what it was connected to? 
Does it appear to stem from a fear, anxiety, a known event? If yes, can you clear that level or layer away from the energy or intuition and it still exists? Or does it dissipate if you take away its negative food source? Is this a common feeling or something more extra or increased? What is your immediate thought or feeling regarding this energy? If you had to write one or two sentences about this energy, what would it be? Not telling a story, but describing it, what it feels like. Sometimes I call this sounds like energy. And the way that I describe it is this. If I'm sensing apple pie, that sounds like grandma's house. So the feeling might be comfort. If you personified it, creating a character for it, what would it say? Does it present itself in a trust-based way or is there conflict energy around it? Is the conflict of your ego, monkey mind, or critic? If we remove them, is the mistrust of the energy still there? This may take a few days to get used to, but once you get in the swing of that, it's going to feel very natural to sense your intuitions and your energy in this way. After all, your intuitions and your energy is a part of who you are. So you are just remembering how to listen. I look forward to hearing of your success. Do you want to learn more on honing your intuitions? Sky has several courses in the classroom that will support the energy of your authentic self. You can find out more on our website, beyoursoul.org, and be sure to sign up for our newsletter for updates and live class schedules. You can always subscribe to our Patreon for as little as $5 a month for early access listening, as well as PDF files for each episode's exercises and more. Patreon allows the great work Sky is presenting to the universe to be supported by the collective. Find us at patreon.com forward slash be your soul sky. And as always, links are on our website. This podcast is produced at Muddy Creek Studios.